but just in case you're not tired enough of doing all over social media um, I wanted to do some occasional video updates so here's a quick one um, well, it might not be quick but uh, obviously I've written some of this stuff but uh, have an amazing time already here in America uh, landed in Boston had about a day and a half there and mainly went to see the clubhouse and just um, what I learned there was um, it's just awesome it, the clubhouse model I really like it's the idea that people uh, come together generally people with a mental health issue uh, join as a member and the idea is that you can of course get support with anything from um, you know trying to find a home trying to find a job learning skills learning language but you come together with other people with that lived experience and with staff and as a member you play a part in the way the clubhouse runs so everybody whether they're staff um, or um, a member it, and it's actually the, the thing I was told is this should be a good clubhouse it should actually be quite difficult when you arrive there to work out who's who because everyone should be working together so when it came to dinner time you know uh, you offer to do jobs and some people wash up and some people serve and some people collect the money and some people bring the pizza over and some people put the video on and that will be members of staff or that will be members of a clubhouse and it just who whatever needs to do in members volunteer to do as much as they can do at that time so if they don't feel like they can do too much then they, they do what they can and if they're having a bad day they might just access support so I just really like that culture and that feeling and it was awesome so I met uh, Michael, Michael was such a, an amazing guy uh, actually was born in Stepney in London and then moved over to Barbados and then ended up in Boston as a US citizen and um, you know, I hope he, you know, he wouldn't mind me sharing that he'd uh, had uh, experienced homelessness and, and you know he really found hope by coming to the clubhouse because he could be part of something with people who understood him and could feel safe practical things that they do so they have you know lockers there that people can use particularly of course are valuable for people who are living homeless because where do you keep your stuff safe if you're trying to do paperwork that you need to provide uh, you know how do you make sure it doesn't get wet or lost or whatever so having a locker that you can come back to and see people who care about you is just so incredibly important and just practical things like that and then work that brings in income so there's work, work that they use to, to fund the clubhouse you know providing flyers and things like that for businesses but also the work of running the clubhouse and then just a big wall of people who've gone and got work having become members and learnt skills and moved forward in their lives so that was just really awesome to see that kind of empowerment really love that and then I like Boston as a city I hope to go back there as a, a tourist I guess soon the one um, strange um, issue I had in terms of language was uh, because even though I was born up north um, I have of course flattened all my vowels out in a very southern way so when I say answers and I was asking a woman whether she hoped one day to find answers to her questions that she had um, it took us about five minutes because she of course was uh, wanted to hear answers answers and I was saying answers so uh, after we established I wasn't talking about my aunt um, and various things she finally uh, realized what I meant and I realized I needed to tell her I wanted answers she wanted answers not answers so just if you're in Boston don't ask for answers you might confuse people or yourself also the propensity as a British person for apology is just clearly frustrating the heck out of people in the service industry so I go to a restaurant feeling stupid because I'm not sure quite what I'm ordering or how sometimes and so I apologize for ordering apologize for existing apologize for asking for milk apologize for asking for a uh, knife and fork apologize for everything uh, and they're just expecting to provide these things so they I can see that I'm just holding up the line and frustrating them by asking for things and apologizing every two seconds very British um, I know but uh, I'm not nothing is not quintessentially awkward and um, so that's been uh, unusual but yeah that was the main thing I got out of Boston was just the, as I wrote in the blog the currency of a clubhouse is hope so they're selling they're providing people are dealing in hope the hope that they'll meet somebody who understands them they hope that they'll find their future, that their human rights are important. There was a mural to human rights because that's an essential thing that they need to understand. And the hope that, that there's something you know more for them and that they can contribute to something bigger. And uh, the hope that you can get two slices of pizza and a movie and some root beer for a dollar on a Friday night was one that I liked. So that was just really awesome. Uh, here in Washington, uh, it's, about, it's a bank holiday or a holiday weekend. It's Labor Day. So uh, I landed Saturday uh, morning and um, really just took my time and I found a really great cafe if you're in Laurel in Maryland then go to Sip at Sea Street it's a great cafe and then uh, I've got to uh, say that the Facebook local app is actually really really cool uh, it just finds where you are and then tells you the events that are going on in a much more structured way than, than the general Facebook app and I found this open mic night at um, a place called Morven Java 
and uh, it's a brilliant cafe here in Laurel and uh, this event which is really cool for, especially in the context of what I'm doing looking at community solutions so it's a cafe um, the the organizer has arranged for local people with a talent for singing or poetry or prose or talking to share their uh, talent and it was just this awesome couple of hours of people just reading poetry creating poetry a woman who'd never spoken before in public just felt inspired to read out a poem that she'd always loved some really really super talented singers and really super talented kind of uh, performance poets just did really powerful stuff the food and drink was provided by a, a donation and what they ask is that you try and pay it forward so that's i really like the idea and obviously we've got sam's cafe where below where i work and maybe when i get back we can talk about doing something similar just a chance for people to share their talent but also to uh, pay forward in that way as well so it's really cool i'm hoping to uh, go back there for some brunch today i think i managed to run and uh, this is not the weather for me for running so i only did half an hour so i think i might have to do a little bit often whilst it's really humid and hot here um, but uh, yeah i managed to run so that was really cool and i'm hoping in the week to do a run around some of the famous monuments in uh, in washington dc because you know that would be really cool to run past all of them so that would be really nice but yeah, I'm learning lots and lots, and I think um, just find they're really powerful. And I've found, uh, I'm hoping an event tonight might be really interesting, which is about um, the graduation of some leaders in the local church. So just interested to see how their leadership route came about, and uh, that'll be really interesting to see. Uh, so yeah, um, it's uh, it's been awesome. And the final thing, the only uh, moment of terror I had when faced with a customs guard was that uh, moment when he looked at my passport and of course those of you who know me a little while uh, well over before, longer than the last six months will know that for a long time I haven't shaven most of the time I shave a bit but not that much and I've been shaving clean shaven recently this of course was my passport photograph not only do I look like a miserable drug dealer um, in the photograph which is a miracle that they let me in um, but I have obviously at that time when I took the photograph I had much more of a beard and the gentleman said, you've shaved. And uh, I said, of course, yes. Uh, terrified that he was going to taser me or shoot me or whatever sort of happens over here. If you look, look like a miserable drug dealer with your passport, you shave. But I think more than anything, he was just disappointed to lose a fellow um, beardy because he had a full beard himself. And so I think that was all it was. He was just uh, a little whimsical and a little sad to lose a brother. Uh, so that's been my only uh, moment of terror since I've been here. I've got an awesome place I'm staying here in Washington. The place in Boston was functional, I think it's probably best to say, but affordable. Uh, here is affordable and very nice, and I love the family who live above me. So, yeah, it's been really cool. I'm hoping to do more stuff today and tomorrow as I enjoy the bank holiday. Um, but also been sorting out some stuff back home, and uh, hopefully I'll have some more updates, and uh, you won't get too sick of me in the next six weeks before I get back. But the only last thing I wanted to talk about was... Uh, weird I talked a bit before I left about feelings of worrying about being good enough and I had this really strange experience on the tarmac you've got that few minutes before you take off where you're still allowed to have your phone on and so I was just uh, saying goodbye to a few friends and things like that and uh, wishing them well and um, and all that kind of thing and um, just like when I was running a marathon that final few miles I was just really struck by thinking about people like dad and my grandparents who are no longer with me who uh, just wondering what I would be saying to them and what they would think of it. Not thinking that they would think anything bad, but it was just an overwhelming feeling of uh, wanting to talk to people who weren't there anymore and find out what they would think about it. I don't know why. Um, but uh, generally speaking, I'm feeling confident now about here that I'm going to do well. I'm so excited. At the last minute, I've managed to finally secure my meeting with NACOA over here in the US, and that's going to be awesome. But the meetings I've got here in Washington are just unbelievably exciting because uh, people have just been so accommodating. So really excited really enjoying it uh, and uh, I'm hoping to go out and find some decent food today uh, yesterday I um, was looking for Wendy's because I really liked the burger at Wendy's that I had the last time I was in America managed to turn up at Wendy's um, which was a Chinese fast food place obviously uh, couldn't just walk out and find Wendy's uh, because I'm awkward so I stood there and ordered a meal <laughs> and ended up with uh, enough I guess they were essentially chicken balls for um, about 7,000 people and enough rice for about 8,000 people but at least I carved up and got some protein in me for my run this morning so every cloud and all that but uh, yeah I'm hoping by the end of this that I will have some sort of transatlantic accent I will feel comfortable enough not to apologize for everything I do and uh, that I'll order some food that I actually want and I'm going to try and 
go back to more than Java now and see if they've got some food that I want, because I'm sure they will.